Today we're going to be talking about how you can get your own server. I know you want one. First of all, a few things to consider. One, hosting. Where are we going to host it or who's going to host it for us? You can either host it yourself or you can pay someone to host it for you. I'm going to pay someone to host it for me. Reason being, if you host it yourself, you have to manage all the firewalls and port forwarding yourself. You're also hosting it inside your house probably. So from your home lab, from your home infrastructure, which basically means that your, everyone will know your IP address and they'll have to come into your house. So that could present a security issue. You know, if you get hacked, instead of just losing everything on the server, you also potentially let them into your house, which is really scary. I don't want to do that. And there's also, you've got to manage a whole lot of rigmarole around IP addresses and DNS changing. You've got to update that every time you reboot your router or whatever, because you probably don't have a static IP. And oftentimes ISPs don't like you doing it for some reason. So I'm going to pay someone to host it. I'm actually going to use OVH, but you can use any other cloud provider you want. Uh, I'm going to buy a VPS from OVH. A VPS is a virtual private server it's basically like we're getting a virtual machine from OVH other options would be AWS, DigitalOcean, Linode here we go so I'm going to go to use OVH I recommend you follow along with me so yeah we're on OVH's main website here we're going to go to bare metal and VPS click VPS here because that's what we want all solutions they've got this nice starter one here I would like that as a limited quantity so if that's not here you have to go for this one but basically We've also got to think of the OS and specs that we want. So our OS is obviously going to be Linux. So we need to think about distribution. I'm going to pick Rocky Linux because it's stable and good for servers. Uh, one virtual core is fine. Two gig of memory, RAM, 20 gig storage, and 100 megabits unmetered. This is very important. This means that whilst 100 meg isn't too, too much in terms of speed, it is quite... It, it, the unmetered part is very important because you won't get surprisingly charged with a... If you're doing loads of downloading or uploading you won't get hit with a big bill at the end of the month right and 20 gig storage sure that's not too too much but it's enough for what we want to do which is host websites you know maybe a cloud just for us to sync our files between our laptop and pc which would be fine if there's not no real media if it's just notes text files and the like uh, but if you are you can always buy more storage in the end websites that's fine two gig of memory again it's fine unless you're doing big databases and stuff you can always upgrade later and for this much money come on per month bruh even this much, this is like a Starbucks. So, you know, for the price of a coffee a month, you can have a presence on the internet that you own. So we just click order now like this. Wow, well, very nice loading screen. And now we can configure it. So I don't know if I'll get this bonus because I'm not a new customer, but you might. And now we've got to choose our image. So we can get a application if we want to put it with Docker. What, what, no. We can get Docker pre-installed, but we're not going to do that. So these are the ones that OVH comes with. If you wanted Arch, you could side load it, of course. Um, but we're going to do Rocky Linux here uh version 9 sure and here we get to pick our data center so they've got uk couple in france canada poland germany australia and singapore so it should, covers most of the world there yeah i'm gonna pick uk sure i've already got some stuff in grab line so i'm gonna, gonna actually change it to uk because you know it's in the uk again doesn't really matter just make sure it's close to you like if it was in australia you'd actually notice the ping lag but any of these, even Canada, would be fine for me. So yeah, we can get additional storage. These are snapshots. So snapshot is basically a, 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 you take a, a snapshot, like a ch -ch -ch of your VPS at that time. And you can roll back to that snapshot whenever you want, but we don't want one of those. We're going to take our own backups. So again, just continue there. We want to renew it every month. So we pay it every month. Uh, Linux, we don't pay for. VPS, monthly fees. What is that? Why is it not taking the deal off for me? Uh, it's because I'm not a new customer, so I'm actually paying £3.50 for this. I have no promo code. I don't pay VOT because I'm outside the UK. Ah, there we go. Look, new customers only, so I should make a new account, but you'll get this for 85 pence. But yeah, we want to renew it every month. So I click continue, uh, and I will be hiding all this from you here, but I'm going to pay with PayPal. So I'm making the payment now. You're not going to see any of this. Okay, we got to read all the terms and conditions, accept that. And let's double check this. So you've got Linux, we don't have to pay for that. VPS, starter. We have to pay more than you would have to if you don't have an account. Yada, yada, yada. Right, and then we go next, £3.50 a month. That's fine. Wow, it's been processed. Within a maximum of 24 hours, we get an email confirming it's been delivered. So it does take time, but this shouldn't be that long. So now we wait for our email. This shouldn't take very long, but I'll come back to you once it's done. That took eight minutes to do, so not too long. How do we how do we do stuff with this? So we go to our dashboard. Then, look, there's no one. This is my old one here, but we click on it. Click on our, our VPS. Ooh. Oh, almost lost my gains there. Oh. So it's running, and then we got our IP here. So, but how do we connect to it? So we get here this email. 
from OVH saying where our IP address is, which is just the same as this one here. Um, but we also get our administrator account, which has been configured. So it's Rocky and this password here. So I'm just going to do this, SSH, Rocky. So the username it gives you at the IP address, like so. And then we need the password. Yes. Paste. Right, so we're on our VPS now. We're connected to our VPS. Okay, brilliant. Check the uptime, 60 minutes. Okay, yeah, I, I changed my t-shirt, all right. Um, and now we're gonna switch to the root user to see if we have root permissions. We do, excellent. It's already been a failed login attempt. Brilliant, fantastic. We're already getting scanned. All right, let's do a few basic security things first. So first of all, um, we need to check SSH is enabled to start on boot, which I, it should be. System CTL, yeah, I did spell that correctly. Status SSH daemon. Enabled, it is enabled. Uh, pro tip, we can also do, instead of that, we can go is hyphen enabled like this, and it's enabled, okay. Now, we need to change some configuration here. So, first of all, I'm just gonna add myself a user like this. And then change to my user, SSH key gen, like this. So to add your user to the wheel group, you type wheel group means that you can use root command user mod dash ag adds group wheel the group which is mark. There we go. So if I id mark, I'm now in wheel. Okay, we'll set mark password. Um, we'll use pwgen. There we go. So there we go. That's do far. That's our password. Um, pass wd mark. Give him a password. There we go. Right, he's got a password. So we, we switch to our mark user with Sue, like so. Jesus, S switch to mark, there we go. We're now mark, and now we can do sudo ls and type that password again. Right, okay, it worked. So there was nothing to ls, but there we go. To prove it worked, right, we are now sudo on the mark, which is good. We want to be able to access mark as root. And we generate them a key. So what are we going to do next? Now we need to enable SSH to only accept keys. So first of all, I will .ssh slash authorized key, create this file. Ah, oh, that's tragic. And add in my public SSH key from my desktop. So this is my public SSH key from my desktop PC. Paste that in there. Did I do that correctly? Yeah. And now I need to correctly ch uh, ch um, chmod that file, like so. And now we can test if I can SSH, SSH mark at uh, whatever this IP was again. This one. Okay, it worked. Right, so we've set SSH up now. I'm going to open up the file etsy SSH, SSHD underscore config, like so. There we go. Um, we could change the port, but we don't really want care about that too, too much. Password authentication. So we're going to un. So we're going to press no like this. Password authentication no. So we don't want to be able to use passwords to authenticate. All right. Anything else we want to set fix here? Ah. What was the other one we just changed then? Password authentication, no. Password authentication, no. Okay, I have password authentication, no twice, so I'll just delete this line. And then we save and quit that file, and then restart our daemon. Like this, check that worked. Okay, it did. Now how do we test this? Because obviously Mark has his key. I'm just gonna switch to my own root user. Run the same command, yes. Mission done. Good. Okay, let's try Rocky. Mission denied. So it needs a password. Otherwise, it will just kick us. Not even work for us. Root. Mission denied. Okay, good. But if we were to add in, let's go back to Mark here. If we were to add in, so let's just test it's still working. <laughs> Oops. Let's test it's still working. There we are. Okay, it is still working good. It is still working. Let us also do the same for root, just to show you that this does work. Damn it. So let me insert, so I'll show you sh root at this IP. 
Doesn't work. Cat, home. Get my um, ID underscore RSA dot pub. Yoink this bad boy here. Paste it in here. So I've put my marks, my users on my desktop PC into um, authorized keys, or roots user, so that command will now work because we're using a key to login. Fantastic, there we go. Right, we've got SSH set up securely so no nerds can try and hack us because they need keys now. Great, and I will remove that Rocky user. So to do that, we need to be not initially SSH in as Rocky. We'll just go straight in as root and user del Rocky. Oh, it is still being used. Oh yeah, it worked, fine. It wasn't being used by anything. It was just a bit confused. So now we've removed Rocky from our user. I forgot to delete its home directory though. So delete the user it comes with. You don't have to do this, I'm just doing it. Uh, yeah, so he's gone now. Poof, gone, poof. So now we've got our server configured to work. So things like host name, domain name, and all that we'll do um, in the next video. But to finish off, let's just update our packages, right? DNF update. There we go, updating our packages. You see it's reasonably fast. We've got lots of packages to update. So yeah, we're gonna update our packages. I'll also install Vim as well off screen. Um, but yeah, so now we've got our own server, we can go ahead and do whatever we like, it's hours and hours only. Just to show you again, one cool thing that OVH does do, it gives you monitoring built in. And our traffic, okay, so yeah, as you can see, we're spiking our traffic massively because we're uh, um, doing our package upgrades. But there you go, so you can do stuff like that if you want. Again, you can buy additional disks if you want, you can schedule automated backups, you have to pay for it though, or get a beefier server. Um, and yeah. You get IPv6 addresses with your server as built in as standard, which is brilliant. But I mean, IPv6, to be honest, it's a bit of a meme. Like, what is that? Uh, uh, why is it so, why is it so hard? Why did they make IPv6 so hard? What, what happened to IPv5? That's my conspiracy. But I'll show you what monitoring looks like on the server that's being used more. It probably won't look very interesting at all, actually. So this is my server that I've had for years. Uh, and if I show you the monitoring. On that, if we go last 12 months. Oh wow. So once, so sometimes it spikes, sometimes it doesn't. Um, whoa, that is crazy. What is going on there? This is probably, I have no idea what's causing this RAM usage, but whatever, it looks cool. And traffic, <laughs> wow. So pretty stable until uh, but occasional spikes, basically. Um, there you go. Interesting stuff, though. Right, next video, I'll show you how to do a domain name. Um, set up a domain, make your server all nice and pretty, easy to connect to, so you don't have to type the IP address in, basically, and how to buy a domain. Because once you've got that, you've got an identity. So I've got mcnally.j, it's perfect, fantastic. So yeah, we'll, we'll set up domain names and change our host name so our server's all pretty and has an identity. Maybe we can give it a nice mesh of the day. Wouldn't that be pretty? Yeah? Give it a nice little banner. Cool. Right. Mark out.